so I say typically someone has a, a a disc problem in their lower back. What would that entail? So yesterday I did a procedure on a young man. He was in his 20s who had a disc uh, ruptured disc that was pinching the nerve down into his leg. And we are able through a half inch incision to go in and remove that disc fragment, which would be about the size of your small finger. Once we remove that, uh, that patient can go home that day and they're up and walking the next day. And usually they're able to go back to most of their activities within a several weeks. So what do you remove it with? Well, the the disc is consistency of uh, crab meat, so you just remove that fragment. We have like a little pair of tweezers we actually pull it out with. And in, in a minimally invasive, you don't like suck it out with a, a, a vacuum packed anything because you would be taking spinal fluid then too, right? Right. So we, we just pull out the fragment that's loose. It's minimally invasive because you make a, a small incision and then use a series of tubes to actually dilate the muscle away. So you don't cut the muscle, and then when you pull the tubes out, the muscle falls back to its normal position. You skin glue the skin together, and away they go. Now, are you doing that looking into the incision, or are you looking on a screen? You're looking through a microscope. You're looking through a microscope. Correct. And what is the magnification on that, roughly? Uh, the med it, it has a zoom on it, so it can get anywhere from about a magnification of 4 up to about maybe 15 or 20. Is there a lot of blood with that? Minimal blood loss. Uh, not even out sometimes. 209-845-1100. Dr. Greg McComas is in the house. If you've got any questions, now's your chance. Let's go to George on line one. Hey, George. Good morning. Doctor, with respect to the spinal column surgery, do you, is there such a thing? I'm told that uh, you can supplement discs with some sort of manufactured discs to kind of add more space between the, uh, the uh, you know, the uh, what do you call them, the uh, vertebrae. They're, they do have artificial discs out. Uh, the FDA regulates them pretty tightly. You can only have uh, one disc, uh, only one disc can be uh, bad, and it can be replaced for that reason. You, you cannot have had previous surgery. There's a lot of limitations to it. Uh, so there's no supplemental disc is what I'm saying, in addition to what you already have there? I was told out of Valparaiso they were doing supplemental discs. Uh, the, the only thing that they're doing here in the United States uh, is these artificial discs. Okay. Uh, and what are they made out of? They're, they're made out of, once again, a plastic on a metal cup or a metal on metal cup. A metal on metal. And so what would you do? Take the crab meat out and put metal in, basically? Correct. You put a little ball and a little cup in that spot. Uh, okay. how, how does that sound? You got back pain, George? Well, I got lower lumbar. And then I was, I was uh, a while back, I had read that they were doing this procedure out of Valparaiso. And it was re relatively reasonably priced in terms of if I had to shell out. But the point was, uh, I couldn't, you know, I, I just want to, that, that they could, I figured, hey, if they can do it down there for one or two, maybe they can do a, you know, supplement the whole thing. And he's saying, all I get is one shot at it. <laughs> yeah, you so, better, better make it right then. Yeah. All right, man. I'll talk to you. 209-845-1100. Dr. McComas is in the house. We're talking to Dave on line three. Hey, Dave. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Doc, are you uh, with, familiar with knee surgeries also? Yes, I am. I mean, I, I know they say there's more than one way to skin a cat, but is there only one way to replace a knee or is there, like, I mean, they're coming with advances every day, right, to do it better? Correct. So for knee replacements, there's really two options. There's one, you can have a partial knee replacement where you just replace the inside of your knee, or you can have a total knee replacement where you replace the entire knee, including your kneecap. And once again, it's based on your anatomy and, and what the x-rays show as far as your arthritis. And, and, and there's pretty good success with that, right? You can lead a good life with that? So the new knees, the manufacturers tell us, will last somewhere between 25 and 30 years. They've been out six or seven years, so we, we don't know. But okay. theoretically, yes, they should last 25 to 30 years. Well, I'll tell you, hey, Jim. Yeah? With, with, with the way they're replacing body parts and people living longer, if your kid is in high school right now or going, be a pharmacist. <laughs> because that job is perfect. I mean, when you turn 50, you start on two or three meds a day. When you're in 60s and 70s and 80s, you need five or ten meds a day. That job is never going away. What do well, you think? Uh, you know what? you got a theory there, and I'm going to have to think about it, but I want to know about your personal knees. Are they, are they bad? Oh, they're bad. You know, and it's when, I, hockey, when right? I play hockey, I, I need a knee brace and four Advils, and, and, and I'm afraid to get it done because, I don't know, I've heard some people got it done and they don't like it. They're still limping. It's like... You know, I'm waiting till the last minute where they really make it perfect to replace the knee. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Uh, maybe he needs to play a little less hockey, but uh, uh, 
what is the general, you know, I know a lot of guys that got new knees. As a matter of fact, my aunt who comes in here, she got two new knees in one day, and she was up the next week clean, you know, helping us clean around here. It's not the same kind of thing it was years ago, right? That's correct. I mean, we, we you can do two knees at one sitting. Uh, we do that quite commonly. Uh, the big the big thing with artificial knees, and actually with any surgical procedure, is how much effort are you going to put into your rehab? Uh, most surgeons do many, many of these procedures. They do them well all the time. The problem is, is the patients all vary as far as how much rehab they're willing to go through, and they really that's where the result comes from. We're talking to Dr. Gregory McComas. He, of course, is with North Point Orthopedics. It's in Dyer and 159. 15900 West 101st Avenue. He's also at 801 MacArthur here in Munster. Let's take your phone calls at 219-845-1100. Let's go to Manny on line 6. Hey, Manny, how you been? I'm okay. Uh, doctor, um, I had surgery back in 2010, um, just a little under two years ago, and um, I had a total hip replacement on my left hip, and it, now it's, it's like kind of like when I walk, it's kind of hard to like move it. I did have some in in home uh, therapy. Um, it's kind of like also uh, when the weather, like when it's humid or, or cold, it kind of like hurts. Is that normal for for that? All right, hang up and listen, Manny. So you know, anytime with the artificial hips or artificial knees, these patients t uh, will have some discomfort or problems when the weather changes. Uh, it has something to do with the barometric pressure. We know that about fractures also. Uh, the, the advantage of doing a minimally invasive hip like I do it now is that I take x-rays the entire procedure, and therefore I get your hip exactly equal to the other hip or exactly to what it, it should be. The older procedure, you had to always guess, and you could be off a little bit. You could be a little bit long, a little bit wide. And those hips tend to be a little bit stiff and tend to be a little bit painful. And I su suspect that's what he's experiencing. 